you go into these type of reforms, you want to be able to say, let's go ahead and do this. Let's provide the work incentives. But then we still need to worry about this progressivity. We need to worry about things like a minimum benefit formula. But I, I've done a lot of work on minimum benefit formulas, and it turns out they often exclude a lot of people who don't have very full careers, which, again, actually is more dominated by women than men. And so then the question is, well, should we make some adjustment for childbearing years? And then the question, well, if we do it for childbearing years, we really don't want to do it at the top. Maybe we just want to do that for people who are below average. So we need to be able to do these things in conjunction with other reforms. And the complication, then you go over to the reform side, and Andrew can speak to that, you get these people sit around a table and they say, well, I like this and I like this, and I pull this off a of menu, and you can't get this full analysis of how to really make the whole you know, solve these problems because you, because everybody debates them one at a time. Well, I don't like this because it's not progressive. Well, maybe it's not progressive, but throwing, stopping throwing money off of a roof is, is not very progressive either, but I don't want to throw money off the roof anymore in a poor area of the city. And so, so you get this dilemma about how to combine these things together in, in, in very useful ways. And that's something we haven't fully dealt with, I think, uh, on this panel, but you'd absolutely have to, have to cover if you're really going to do uh, uh, Social Security reform.